We're here today with the Stark County Emergency Management Agency. Yes. And we're here uh, with the director and uh, two other individuals would be uh, Doug Wood, who uh, is a deputy director, and uh, then Julia Patterson, who's a 911 coordinator. Uh, the focus will be on the director, of course, but from time to time during this um, videotaping, undoubtedly the director will want to refer uh, parts of the questions asked to uh, either uh, Doug Wood or Julia Patterson. So thank you, um, Director um, uh, Warsler, for allowing the Stark County Political Report to come in and ask some questions about uh, enhanced uh, 911. Uh, uh, recently, uh, one of the uh, television networks put a segment on where they talked about uh, an enhanced 911 system. In fact, they've done two probably within the last year, different companies where uh, the discussion is a tremendous advancement in terms of real-time contact between a 911 dispatcher and the person in need. Yes, uh, and there's um, several emerging companies with this, um, companies that had similar type products. Um, there's pages and pages when you do an internet search. Um, some, some have produced as many as 11 pages for me of similar companies. It's, again, like traditional 911 um, software companies. There's a handful that are considered serious contenders right now with the enhancement type products, there's a small handful that are considered uh, serious contenders for something we might consider going with here. Okay. Well, let's run through the history of 911 a little bit. Uh, some material that I looked up in my research indicates that the first idea of a universal emergency call number started back in 1957. And uh, it appears that we really didn't have a functioning 911 operation anywhere in the country till about 1967-1968. And uh, through the years, uh, there was a relatively small percentage of Americans that had access to 911. One uh, early on uh, between 67 uh, and the 90s, 17% uh, was the quote. Then uh, the latest is, uh, I think, 96%. Right. So there's been a huge advance. Now, when did we start 911 in Stark uh, County? Late, late 80s, I believe it was 1989. And I can tell you there were areas in Ohio that did not finish, get, um, get 911 service until the early 2000s. So you know, we, we were right in that, as you said, 1990s, that was the explosion with uh, the expansion of service across the country from that initial low of 17%. We were right in that initial um, bunch across the country, you know, and like I said, it's parts of Ohio, it was some very rural parts of Ohio. It was in the early 2000s that they, they didn't have a countywide 911. I know one of our neighboring counties didn't have countywide 911 until the early 2000s, and that was uh, Columbia County. Okay. Stark County has always uh, tried to be state of the art. I, I can remember back in, I think it was uh, mid-2000s uh, when I first started the Stark County Political Report that uh, there was some concern about the 911 system being broken yeah. and uh, that caused a stir in the community. We're past that now. Uh, not too long ago, uh, the Stark County Emergency Agency uh, with the approval of the Stark County Commissioners made a purchase of uh, state-of-the-art equipment. Could you just describe that very briefly? Uh, yeah, actually that first purchase was about 2005. Okay. Um, we went to, um, as we, we prepared for next generation, what they're calling next generation. Our last system, Julia, when did we, by the way, seven years ago? 2011. 2011, we purchased the current software that is now owned by um, our current version of software, but we've replaced all of the hardware, servers, things like that just in the past six months 
uh, on our current system, and we should have about three more years of life on the software on our current system, but we are looking at you know, what the next step is gonna be. But we, sitting here today with the minor, with the exception of one software version, not talking about 911 enhancement products, but actual 911 operating softwares, we're one software version behind, uh, or you know, there's one, one newer version of software that we could potentially buy, and we don't know that we need those features right now. So we're, that's what's really driving a lot of this evaluation for us. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Julia? Okay, do you wanna? Anybody want to add anything? Julia? How about you, uh, Doug? Okay. Um, now, so Stark County should feel comfortable with um, the uh, quality of the 911 system here in Stark County? Yes, I, I, I truly believe that. And um, I, uh, I, I've always said that. It is, uh, there's, one version of software newer that we could buy right now. And there's enhancement products and things like that that we're evaluating, but we're just about as close as you can get to what they're offering right now. There's a couple of, you know, every company there, there's companies that have been on the market, some of them less than, less than a year that are offering new enhancements. Okay, well, could you just briefly describe um, uh, what the criteria uh, are for, um, uh, these enhancement systems? Well, the enhancement systems, one will have to put together a set of uh, bit specifications locally with a, we, who's a working group? Julie organizes a working group of all the dispatch centers in Stark County. Representatives are invited. That working group will develop a set of specifications that they believe that they want, that they've seen from different products. We'd like to see, you know, we want to see all of this in our next advancement. And then that will be put out to, you know, for a, for a bid process. And, and let me interrupt here just to make an important point. You have a working group here in Stark County that includes the dispatch uh, centers. Yeah. And uh, uh, Doug Wood and uh, Julia Patterson. And any decisions that are made or recommendations that are made to the Stark County commissioners who ultimately make a d the decision of what, if anything, uh, Stark County is going to do with its 911 system is uh, it's a consensus a product that goes to the uh, commissioners. Is that correct? It's correct on the purchases of software and things like that. If it's a change to the overall 911 system, if there would be some type of change to that, that there is a separate section of actual law. There's, there's 911 committees and stuff that have to be brought together by the commissioners, but this is a working group of the dispatch director of the dispatch centers, um, usually their directors or their whoever the leader is for those uh, dispatch centers. It's that group of people that come together to make the decisions and they get to come together just to make sure everything in the current system is working correctly. They meet four times a year, Julia? Yeah, four times a year. They meet four times a year automatically, and then as we're evaluating products, they meet additionally for things like that. They've currently been meeting for recording solutions, because um, it's you, you don't realize how involved uh, recording all of this stuff is for future evidence for, you know, everything from trials to all kinds of things, how important it is to capture all this information. Uh, recording systems can be a, a quarter million in themselves. Um, so yeah, they're, they're meeting right now on recording and they're meeting on these 911 enhancement products um, is the last couple meetings that they've had is what have been surrounding those products. Giving it a broad brush, what do the enhancement products, and I know it varies from company to company, but just in general, what is enhancement compared to what we have now? Um, what video capabilities? I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to make it real simple. Enhanced, potentially enhanced location information. What these what these products do is they you're giving them permission to grab any kind of location data that's in your phone, right down to let's say you used a a pizza app to get pizza delivered to you at the park. Okay, and that information's in there. If there's location data located in your phone, potentially some of these applications, you're allowing them to grab any kind of location information that's in your phone so they can make, so that it helps them, assist them in where you're at. Because oftentimes we have GPS 
applications on our phone. We have location-based applications on our phones, such as mapping, um, all kinds of products. I mean, right down to pizza delivery. I'm not being facetious there. They they can find you in a park, and then people ask who why. knows where somebody's going to be right. when there's a uh, an emergency. And the existing system works great with landlines. It works great with landlines. It works very good with cell phones. Once you call 911 and we have time, and I'm going to say 45 seconds at least, to determine where you're at. What you have to remember with all these other applications, you've already given them permission to track you. They are able to ping your phone on a regular basis to figure out where you've moved to. When you make that call to 911, we start that process all over. So it's just like the first time you downloaded one of those apps. It doesn't know where you're at immediately. It takes some seconds, 45 seconds. So it's that's what, with 911, that's the delay is when you call it. These enhancement products are grabbing that information and providing it to try and help enhance where you're at. Okay, but for this to work, I know that on my cell phone, I, it comes up and said, well, do you want uh, your location to be known? Right. So a key to this will be uh, a cell phone owner uh, allowing uh, location information. Is that correct? That, that is correct. And what is happening with these new enhancement systems is a 911 dispatcher here in the short future and in just a few places in the country right now, they're able to send you a text and it has a link in it. They tell you, they're on the phone with you, hey, hit the link on your phone. Boom, your phone, depending on which phone it is, might say, hey, do you allow access? And you'll have to hit that also. Once you do that, they'll be able to actually see video if they want to, to see what you're seeing via video. They'll be able to instant message with you. So another platform, if you're not able to talk, you can switch over to instant messaging. Um, let's say you're in a domestic violence situation or something like that where you don't want to talk out loud. You're, you know, you're hiding from someone. Those are the kind of things that these enhancement products offer, but we have to determine do they, how many phones do they work with? Do they, do they require certain software operating systems in the dispatch centers? There's a lot of technical issues, but then there's also some um, there's going to be some public issues on you know what's shared and everything else. One of the big issues too that we have to consider that has never been it just now being dealt with. It's been written about, but is uh, fatigue of the 911 dispatchers themselves. Yeah. What and, are what are what's going to be the dispatcher of the future's experience when we uh, go to enhanced uh, technology? Um, they're going to see what's happening real time. So when you talk about shootings. Uh, mass shootings. Uh, imagine a dispatch center now gets all of the frantic phone calls and they're trying to dispatch people, but now they're going to actually see what's happening. There is some, in some circumstances, that's going to help them very much in getting all the resources they need there, but in others, that is going to hold some. Um, we have to consider their uh, mental well being in what they see in the dispatch centers too, because they're going to have the the ability here in the, um, and when I say foreseeable future, potentially months, um, they're going to have the potential to see what's actually happening out in the field. So when somebody calls and says there's a, you know, there's a fire and they're all panicked, well, once they can see the video and, okay, it's a single car fire, not a whole block on fire. You know, it looks large and it's big to the person, but oh, it's a car fire on the highway, beside the highway. It's the only thing that can be on fire versus it's a car in the garage of an apartment building. You know, um, that, that, there's all kinds of examples, but that is going to be something that has to be considered by the dispatch centers also is the uh, wellness of the uh, dispatchers that are now going to be exposed to the events in real time where tr traditionally your um, on some of these events, they're going to be essentially eyewitnesses to what's happening. Well, the Stark County uh, Emergency Management uh, Agency is moving toward, and has been, as I understand it, uh, considering taking on enhanced 911 uh, capability. How long has that been going on, and where do you stand right now in that consideration? Julia, help me out here with some of the, when, do you know, remember when we first met with uh, the group about it last year? Was that in August? 
Oh, for the uh, smart. Yeah. Um, it was probably dinner summertime of last year. I'm, I'm going to say I, just roughly, Martin. I don't have an exact date, but August of last year, we really started. Uh, we knew about the products. One of them came to the forefront last August, and I would say that's one of the three. One of the three lead contenders right now, um, and there's been a couple others that have, you know, come to the surface in the same amount of time. That this stuff is just, the technology is just leap, leaping past each other. But what you find out is, what you think is a better than sliced bread may not be, or the company may not have uh, a. One of the companies that looks really good that you've mentioned by name to me is uh, I'm concerned about do they have a sales force and, a, and an IT force to support the product that they're promising us? Um, they're, they were, you know, it, it, I'm concerned with how, how does the company have the infrastructure to handle everything they're promising? Um, it's impressive to see the stories that they've done on NBC and other places, but those are very, um, very short snippets of what they're doing and you know one of the companies we looked into we just found out that they you know they just got all their funding for their company their their um, capital funding just within the past 18 months so they these are brand new companies and products that we're talking about um, and uh, there's a right and you're avoiding naming companies that you're considering looking at uh, because you want it uh, it don't want uh, the public to think that at this juncture you favor one over the other uh, and of course the group that we talked about uh, will really uh, be uh, the consensus builder uh, for you and uh, as director and the group to go to the commissioners so it's a wide open process right now it, it and, is and they'll decide just let me clarify for everyone they will decide the specifications that they want to see so let's say six companies come in and all say they can provide the best service that everyone's ever seen and beyond they'll take the best things they see from all of them and put a set of bid specs out and see who can do the best job even that group can't pick necessarily pick a specific company because of the public bidding process we have to go out to bid so we have to be very we have to be specific on what we want the product to do for us and that and will come see. out of the commissioner's office yes correct? yes yeah we'll make a recommendation to the commissioners to go to bid on something like this or to, or to ask for sealed um, may not be a traditional bid process maybe a sealed proposals that we let companies tell us what is the best what what you know what is the best way to do this and it is um, there, there's a there's a process you know, for that that we're not we're if we start naming companies it's because some companies as you know just yesterday announced hey we made a partnership with this company we're able to do all this new stuff yeah. sitting here today we think we know what that means and enjoy I'm gonna let you address that one of the companies come out and said they're partnered with a major data company and I asked Julia this morning, I said, can you, can you give me 15, less than 15 minutes on what does this mean for us going forward? And in a bottom line, is, can you describe that without using names? It basically allows this company uh, partnered with a big network company, which allows the uh, dispatchers to be able to access cameras, um, the city's infrastructure, with uh, video, things like that. Okay. Yeah, so it's, there's, and, and that just happened yesterday that we found out about So that. it's a dynamic uh, s a situation that you're dealing with. Right. And there may be something new today, tomorrow, right. and, and. Um, by the time you change, by the time you put this article on your webpage, I may have something significant to tell you different. Just about, there were three specific companies you came in and asked me about. Things are moving so fast, I wouldn't be shocked that I got something new to share with you. Uh, hey, I heard about this company, you know, did this. We will make a final decision, but it'll be through that bid process, and we'll be locked in for a year or so when that happens. And part of that concern is we, we're trying to stay as best we can in lockstep with the state of Ohio, because the state of Ohio is, has, a, has a statewide 911 office, and some of these very same enhancement companies are not just trying to sell to the locals, they're trying to sell their system 
to the state so that it's distributed on a statewide basis. So Ohio is in the process from a state level of uh, trying to put together a statewide system, something like the uh, March radio it's, system? It's called EziNet, and Joy, I'm going to let you describe EziNet to, as best you can. Um, uh, uh, or you want me to, I'll give, I'll give my shot e, at it. Actually, it's ESINet. That's ESINet, how, that's net, sorry. That's correctly pronounced. ESINet, and it is using the Ohio ORNet and the Ohio Backbone. It's the same system that is used for marks. It's using some of that same backbone, but it's building it out strictly for, what's it stand for, Emergency Services Internet? Yes. Emergency Services Internet, and it is meant to carry the 911 traffic in the state of Ohio, but it will also allow us what it's promising promising to do in all of their bid specs and things that the state has done is it's going to improve location capabilities even more than we have today is that yeah it's basically an ip network that's being run on on ip network rather than running on the traditional camera trunks okay that's what it boils down to okay. so there's a little bit of um uncertainty on the state system in terms of when it might, if ever, be up and running as a statewide uh, system, which uh, puts some pressure on Stark County and other counties in Ohio is, well, do we wait on the state or do we uh, get up and moving now? And of course, what we're talking about is getting help to people faster and in some cases maybe a little extra time or uh, a narrower time uh, response might actually save a life. Correct. I I think that Stark County is the position we have right now is we have um, a little bit of time to make a decision, but we will very possibly have to make it as a best decision possible that we can and move forward and then wait to see what the state does um, because we're our software is good till 2022 that we currently use for our traditional 911 base layer. These enhancement things can be put on top of it with no problem. They're, they're plugins to it. But the new 911 software may have to happen before the state comes out with something. And that will be just a decision that has to be made. We were in this situation uh, before where we moved ahead with a uh, with some technology and stuff before the state, we thought the state was going to move. We've had to make this move before, um, you know, move ahead and not wait on them. So I'm not, it's not going to hold us back, but we're trying to stay as much as we can in lockstep with them. We, we certainly wouldn't want to waste the taxpayer's money on something that the state turns around and develops with, um, with state taxpayer money. You know, if we uh, go with a local solution, and it doesn't happen to match what the state does, it could mean that um, wherever we are, uh, there, uh, at least on an annual basis, there's going to be a loss of some revenue. But this is um, weighed against the uh, safety and security of Stark Countyans, which is the prior concern. Right, and I, I, will, I, will, I will tell you, I don't think the working group, myself, anybody, the commissioners, anybody, would hesitate in moving forward and not, you know, not waiting. We're not going to wait on the state just, just to save money. You know, I mean, it is, it is one of those. It's not, it's not the be all end all. Of, but we have to make smart financial decisions along with this. It's not just the, there is a, uh, you know, it's the safety of the residents, but it has to be smart financial decisions and and timely. In that, you know, maybe we only enter into one con one year contract so we can reevaluate where the state's at. Maybe only do it one year at a time, um, or maybe, you know. I would say if I was going to, sitting here today, it was if we were moving forward, I I couldn't with a good conscience re recommend anything more than a three-year contract to the commissioners because we need that window to look at what the state is doing at that point so that we could either purchase something else and or continue with the product we have. But if we were to, we're going to be forced to buy a new base system within the next three years because of our um, software. So if we some type of upgrade or new base system. But beyond that, any other products we buy, I think doing anything more than a max of a 36 month window would could be um, a bad financial, could turn out to be a bad financial decision. But again, yeah. safety and security 
are the lead factors. Oh, right. And I mean, to give you some example, it, it has to do with 911. Um, we have the Stark County Emergency Warning System, uh, a phone system that can call right. your cell phones, can call, we can force a message out to you. Now, we have to pay for that service. We pay for the service that was set up for Stark County, but then we also pay when it goes out. And to give you some idea, it costs us, let's say we want to send two messages, a message that, and I have an example of this, a message that we want to send out to you that says 911 is not working. Okay, and then we want to send a message a few hours later, hey, 911 is back up and working. The cost to just send that message to all of Star County is about $5,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it doesn't, it, all this comes with a price tag right. um, because you have to pay for those text messages and phone calls because the company's providing that service to us, of course, have to pay for them. Um, so there, there are some costs involved with this, but it is, um, th those are, those are all part of the decision making. It's um, the public safety. There's nothing wrong with our current system. We're as we're as ready to go as we can be, with the exception of the tech solution, which is how many companies do we just say about six that are fully compliant in Ohio? Is that for the tech services? Yeah, for text. Yeah, around that time. Around, around six in Ohio, and we're currently working on that. We want to get, you know, there, that's another whole another subject. But there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts to 911 right now in Star County. But we have a very good, very good system. Um, with uh, if we were going to spend just if we were just to go spend money like crazy, there's only a couple of these enhancement products that we could add to it. But you're taking on reoccurring charges. If we bought the two leading products right now that are being push to us and that we've seen news stories about and everything, we would add about a quarter million dollars in cost per year reoccurring forever, potentially, to the to the operating cost of 911. It already cost about 1.2 million a year to operate the 911 system in Star County. Um, if we add another quarter million onto that indefinitely, that's just increased cost. So it, it cost, does, the cost is a factor in all of that. Your sources of revenue uh, our uh, taxpayers right. uh, pay those excise tax on the phone bill. Yes. And also, uh, Stark County has a levy. Just describe that very briefly to uh, viewers. As brief as I can, we have a 911 levy that's uh, for uh, local cost of the 911 system. That generates uh, it's between six and seven hundred thousand dollars a year here in Stark County. And that lets us take care of our legacy equipment and our legacy cost at um, all of our smaller dispatch centers. We also have the 911 wireless funds from the state of Ohio, which is the 22 cents, Julia, I think, about a little over 20 cents charge on your cell phone bill. That money has very specific rules for how it's allowed to be spent towards wireless things, and that generates between around 800 thousand to a million dollars in income to the county so those are the two sources of of income every year for for the county so we're you know and you probably get some grants on top of that but that's not really if you do get them yeah, there are some talk of grants in the future to do some of these enhancements around the country but right now only the state can apply for them we as locals are not able to apply that Hopefully that's going to change in the next couple of years, that maybe we could get some additional grant dollars, but right now, sitting today, those grant dollars are uh, on the federal program that people have heard about are only available to the state of Ohio, not the local communities. Okay, well, wrapping things up, I know you didn't uh, put a crystal ball on the table this morning, <laughs> but how long uh, do you think it might be before Stark Countyans uh, might uh, enjoy the benefits of having enhanced uh, 911? Um, it will definitely be months. I would say at a, with, without a crystal ball. It, Hopefully by the end of the year? Possibly by the end of the year. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, okay. I'm gonna rely on her. We're, she knows better with the working group where we're at. We have to develop, you know, yeah, possibly by the end of the year. But again, depending on what changes go on with the state and things like that, those changes can delay that decision. Where I would, me personally, I thought I knew who the leader was six months ago on all of this technology out there and who would be the smart company to go with, you know, ooh, 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 this would be the right decision to make. And 
that's not the same decision today, you know. And it, again, it's the decision of that group of dispatch centers. They have to be the ones that use this stuff every day. So, you know, our job becomes here at this office becomes facilitating the purchase process of that and actually getting it installed for them. And it's not deciding that it's this particular product that you're going to get. They get to decide what the specifications are. The bid process may, divide, may decide the actual provider, but then it's our job to make sure we get a good price for the county taxpayers and um, make sure that we, we get the product that we're promised. You know, it's one thing for a company to say they can do something. It's another, in a sense, of being a lot of Julia's job, is making sure the companies actually provide the services that they said they're going to. Okay. Just a, a little personal information in terms of your employment here at the yeah. Stark County Emergency Ma Management Agency. How long have you been here? I started in uh, 2001. I served as the interim director um, for several from for several months in 03 and 04, and then I became the director in 05. Okay. Um, and then finally, uh, this is standard operating procedure for a Stark County political report. I've tried to be very thorough and exhausting in asking questions, but is there anything that either you or uh, Mr. Wood or Ms. Patterson uh, have to add to uh, what we uh, discussed today? The only thing um, that I would add is, uh, what did you um, I just looked that up. Oh, just, just update you. She just, she just looked it up while we were sitting here. As of uh, February, as of February when the state did a survey, there's 13 counties that have text to 911 in some form. That may be, there's a few that have it turned on for everything. Some have it turned on for some companies on some towers, but there's 13 counties that are somewhere in some phase of having text turned on. And we're, we're, we're working to move along with that too. But the last thing I would say, there are a lot of um, 911 enhancement type products that are promised to people. When you go to your, cell, whatever cell phone service you use, when you go to the app store to look at apps, there are a plethora of 911 enhancement apps. That's Just please make sure you know who you're sharing your information with. If you choose to, choose one of those. Also make sure that they actually work. Um, right now, even the national organizations will tell you the best way to contact 911 is to dial 911 on a landline or a cell phone. Dial 911. Some of these enhancement apps um, are are focused towards domestic violence victims, towards people that are out running, you know, in remote areas or in parks. There's all kinds of apps that say they'll call 911 for you, but will they really? One of the um, articles I just read was a product that promised to contact 911 for you, and it was doing it as a text. The problem is when they actually tested the product, the product sent a message back that said 911 was being contacted, when in reality they were in an area where text was not turned on yet. So in fact, nothing was happening with the app. So they, in the app in that area couldn't actually do what it said it was capable of doing. There's a lot of misinformation right now with all these products, and there are a lot of selections if you look in your cell phone, and very few of them can provide everything they say they are, and it's because of the uh, leapfrogging effect we're having in this country with the advancements in wireless 911 and the technology is leapfrogging ahead of what the companies that provide 911 such as AT&T the major phone providers can even keep up with and the last thing I would tell you in the purchasing process one of the things you have to understand is when we buy a product it's not just what we decide we want we have to make sure that it works with our current 911 process or, or, or software our, our legacy system and that it's been tested with like for in our case AT&T laboratories whenever we go to purchase a new 911 stand, uh, system of software it's not only tested by the companies that developed it it has to be tested to make sure that it's compatible with all the equipment that AT&T has so there there's a there are multiple um, multiple different sources that have to make sure this stuff works before we can actually put it out and tell the public that it's there for them to work, to, to use. Is that anything you can, anything you want to add to that, Julia? No, Okay, that's the best I can do. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, uh, Director Washler and uh, Deputy Director Wood 
and 911 coordinator Patterson for being with the Star County Political Report today. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm, that went nice.